Garbage collection? Is this a video about Go? No. Believe it or not, there is garbage collection in a bunch of languages, not just Go, even if that's where we usually end up talking about it nowadays. Obviously, languages like Rust don't have GC and you have to clean up your memory yourself. And I know for a lot of you JS devs, you might not even know what garbage collection is. A real quick TLDR is that garbage collection is the method that we use to collect things that are left behind when we finish running code. If you have a function that takes a bunch of data that it read from a file and then the function completes, you shouldn't still have that data in memory. And the solution to this is garbage collection, where we look through the memory, see what is and isn't still being used and clean it up. As great as this process is, because it makes it so much easier to write code, it does have some flaws. and where would you go for flaws in a language other than JavaScript, the world's most flawed popular language? And with that, we have some real fun garbage collection behaviors that were discovered by Jake, Surma, and Jason. And I wanna take the time to break these down because they're fascinating. Link in the description is always, huge shout out to Jake and crew for writing this one. So, me, Surma, and Jason were hacking on a thing and we discovered that garbage collection within a function doesn't quite work how we expected. So in this example, they create an array buffer with a ton of space. They set a timeout here. So this timeout means that this occurs after the function executes, but then we return a cancel function so we can clear the timeout. So we have this timeout, which means this will run a second after the function executes. But if we wanna stop that, we can call the function that it returned. So global this.cancel demo equals demo. Now within one second, the byte length will be console logged, but we could clear it. If we called global this.cancel demo as a function, we would clear the timeout and this would never happen. I wanna know when the memory gets cleaned up. I'm very curious now. So here we have some interesting things. Apparently with the above, the big array buffer is leaked forever. This was unexpected to the crew because after a second, the function referencing big array buffer is no longer callable and the returned cancel function doesn't reference the big array buffer. Yeah, that's interesting. You would think that after this got called, it'd be fine. My assumption was if you called this clear function that might leak because it didn't properly clean up, but just by returning the clear timeout, it appears to be keeping this in scope. My guess is because ID is the returned value from this, which means it's reference counting from big array buffer to this anonymous function to set timeout to ID to this function. And since global this.cancel demo still exists and it references ID, that reference tracker results in big array buffer staying allocated. That's my guess. We'll see as we go forward. JS engines are reasonably smart. This doesn't leak. If we have a big array buffer, we log it and call demo, that will get cleaned up properly. This also doesn't leak because set timeout being called here means that once this is done, the reference counter dies and it falls apart and it gets cleaned up. I think that I'm right on this now that I'm seeing this, that this doesn't leak makes me feel like I actually know memory. See, I can do low level stuff. Watch, I'm gonna go pivot into Rust now. No, I'm not, I never would. Anyways. In this case, the engine sees big array buffer is referenced by inner functions. So it's kept around. It's associated with the scope that was created when demo was called. After a second, the function referencing big array buffer is no longer callable. Since the function's no longer callable, big array buffer gets destroyed. I don't necessarily think it's about the callability of the function so much as a reference to the function. This reference to this function, which references big array buffer, exists until it's executed and then it doesn't. But if we had assigned it to something, then it would continue to exist. Yeah, my guess is if instead of the clear timeout there, we literally just returned ID, the same problem would exist. That's my gut. Specifically because it's being assigned to global this, which means it'll just be around forever. This also doesn't leak because again, the, remember you, when you're thinking of garbage collection, you have to think about the reference counter, the, the chain of events and how a given thing that takes memory is understood to be consumed. So big array buffer here is not being consumed by anything. So there's no reference that would have to be tracked. And as soon as this executes, it's gonna get cleaned up. But if we were to put big array buffer in here, now there's a reference to it there. ID references this, this references that. Clear timeout references the ID, which references this, which references this, which means it can't be cleaned up. That makes sense. So again, this example is actually quite helpful in that it shows this only gets bound if it's included in the timeout function. Here's where it gets messy. Once we log the big array buffer, meaning that this is now tracked here, the reference counter has gone up, and it leaks because the engine sees big array buffer is referenced by the inner function, so it's kept around. It's associated with that scope that was created when demo was called. Or after a second, the function referencing big array buffer is no longer callable, but the scope remains because the cancel function is still callable. Big array buffer is associated with the scope, so it remains in memory. Called it. 
banger. I know my shit. See, for once, I'm actually right about how this works. I hate that I know JS as well. I actually hate myself for that. And I expected this as well. When you set global this.cancel demo to be null, now it can be garbage collected because you've wiped the one reference that was still available. That checks out. This isn't specific to timers though. It's just how I encountered the issue. For example, you could do something like this. We have the buffer, global this.innerfunk1 logs it, global this.innerfunk2 console logs it. And now when we call demo, it's being retained. If we call global this inner function one and set it to something else, it's still being uh, retained. And inner function two is what clears it. That's weird. Is it because both of these are like referenced together because it's multiple changes to global this? How easy is it for me to set this up in a way where I can debug it in my own console and see when memory isn't isn't freeable? Because my gut feel is if like this was window.innerfunk and this was global this.innerfunk2, that it might allow the cleanup earlier. Because my guess is since both of these are interfacing on the same object, that all references to that object that were defined here are grouped together. Or, and if any one of them is still around, the binding still exists and the reference counter still exists. That's my guess. Okay, according to chat, I can just do this in the browser. So we've done that. Let's pull up. Do I have to like rerun that then? Probably. Record. Can I do that while I'm in the console at the same time? It does not appear I can. That's really annoying. Okay, we have 101 megabytes being used right now. Global this dot inner func one equals null. And go back to memory. So we still have that. If I was to take another snapshot, it's still 100 megs, but global this dot inner func two equals null. Now a new snapshot, 2.5 megs. Cool. We have everything we need to fuck with this now. Huge, huge, huge. Thank you, chat, for the help here. Here's the first thing I want to try. Window.innerfunk1 instead. Make sure this still allocates too much. Cool. Window.innerfunk1 equals undefined. Fuck. Okay. I'm not as clever as I thought I was. Just make sure before I run that, Still the same. Can I brute force? Somebody said I can brute force the garbage collection. I don't know how I would do that. The brush icon does it. Yeah, here is that giant binding here still. Yeah, this big array buffer is still bound because of inner func two in window. Global proxy. Yeah, fuck. That sucks. JavaScript's dumb. <laughs> Yeah, now I'm sure if I take the snapshot, it's gone now. Yeah. <sighs> now I have to fuck with this. Global this dot inner func one equals, I'll just yoink that. And instead here, we're going to call allocate. I'm just curious if like one level of abstraction is enough for this to stop doing that. So then we'll do global. Actually, I should clear and restart this all. Cool. Paste. Global this dot inner func one equals undefined. And now we will check. That does it. That's fucking stupid. I had a feeling. Called it. Somebody in chat was literally typing as I did that, that it would not or that it would still be in scope. Nope. You uh, underestimate JavaScript's incompetence, but also underestimate its competence. What if I return the function from allocate? Then it will break for sure. That That is like guaranteed to break. Actually, no, just returning this. Um, I guess we could do global this.interfunk1 equals. That I'm actually curious about. Yoink that, clear this, paste. I should just add the uh, global this.innerfunk1 equals undefined here to make the copy paste job faster. Memory, snapshot, 2.2 megs. Fuck, that does it too. It's because the definition is happening inline that that happens. Huh. Last check. This is going to drive me mad if this also works. This absolutely shouldn't because now the uh, array buffer will exist within this scope. 
Yeah, if this works, then it's straight up just a dumb bug in JavaScript. Yeah, no, I expected that one to work or to not work. Yeah, that makes sense. Fascinating. Move the function out again. Yeah, so, okay. I'm gonna do my best to describe why this is happening the way it is from my understanding. Know that everything else in this video, relatively right, relatively confident, probably trustworthy. Here I'm getting into straight up crazy speculation land. So know that going into this part. My suspicion here is that the existence of big array buffer here implies that any bindings that occurred here might still depend on this. If I was to actually, let's just make a function. So I'll just do func or const func equals allocate. We'll just put this here for now then. Cool. So what I'm trying here is we're going to bind this function that logs it, not to global this, just in general, we're going to bind it and see what happens. Memory, new snapshot. Ha ha. Had a feeling, had a feeling. That is pathetic, but it makes so much sense. Okay. So I get it now. Any call to global this that occurs inside of a function means that any key in this function will continue to exist and not be able to be cleaned up until every call to global this has been dereferenced. So by doing anything with global this in the same place that big array buffers defined, I would bet even if we comment this out, it might still happen. So we're gonna try that. No, it doesn't. So if you have to define a function, cool. So if you define any functionality that exists in this scope, that is the same scope as where the global this binding is created. It is the, the shared scope of this global this binding, this instantiation, and any function that could touch big array buffer. It doesn't even have to be on global this for that to happen. If we just log the length, that's actually a good question too. Let's try that. Clear, paste, memory, snapshot. That one can clean up. That makes sense. Because technically, it, it doesn't have any reason to believe it could still be called. But what's fascinating here is that a function scope cannot be cleaned up until every instance of a global this binding is cleaned up first if they're in the same scope. So the creation of a function that calls this being at the same level, so to speak, the same scope that a global this assignment occurs means that this reference has to be cleared before any other references in this can be cleared as well. So again, if I just paste that one, we'll refresh, paste, memory, snapshot, 102. I only have to screw with global this dot inner func two now. So now we've set that to undefined, we will once again be down to two megs of memory. Jesus, cool. I'm happy we took the time to do that. Thank you, chat, for telling me it was not that hard to do. I'm not testing this with Ver. You cannot convince me. There are some updates here. I want to read these two. I originally thought the capturing of values only happened for functions that outlived the initial execution of the parent function, but that's not the case. Oh, look at that. Same thing I just found. Cool. It's a cross-browser issue. Apparently others have written about it. Oh, this React. This was the React query one, right? Yeah, I saw this one. I was almost going to reference this. This seems like an awesome article and Kevin's a bro. So definitely worth checking that out if you're curious about how these things affect you in React. Yeah, my head hurts. This is what happens when I talk about memory too much. It's almost like my brain has too much memory in it already and now we're overfilling it. And I feel like this is one of those memory leaks that I'll never unallocate. This is all I'm gonna be able to think about whenever I call global this in JavaScript that I didn't get ever again. Let me know if your head hurts too and if this is gonna stay in your memory or if you're just gonna garbage collect it out. And until next time, Peace nerds.